Hello everyone and welcome to our video devoted to continuous integration for Cuba apps with Jenkins. My name is Natalie and I represent the development team of Cuba platform. In this video you will learn how to get started with Jenkins and its automation server for Cuba application. We'll discuss things like automated deployment, running tests, card coverage and continuous delivery to test environments. We will use the sample sales application for demonstration. It can be downloaded from the Studio Welcome screen in the Samples tab or from GitHub. Jenkins is an open source automation tool written in Java with plugins built for continuous integration purpose. Jenkins triggered a build for every change made in the source code repository, for example Git repository. Once code is built, it deploys it on the test server for testing. Finally, Jenkins deploys the build application on the production environment. Jenkins provides various native packages to streamline the illustration to major operation system. This page describes the procedures for new installation of Jenkins on a single local machine. This content can also be used to help set up Jenkins in production environments. We assume that you already have Jenkins up and running and have administration privileges. In this video we are going to use Git as a project CSM. We need to install additional plugins that will be enable us to execute Gradle tasks and to use the Git repository to pull the source code for building. To install plugins in Jenkins, use Manage Jenkins, Manager Plugins, link and search for the plugins you want to install. Select plugin from the list, install it and restart Jenkins. At the start we add two plugins, git plugin and gradle plugin. The build of a project is handled via jobs in Jenkins. So let's create a new job for our project. Go back to the dashboard and click create new jobs. Then enter a name for the job. Select freestyle project and click OK. Configure how the source code can be retrieved. We are using Git, so enter the URL to the Git repository. If the repository is not public, you may also need to configure the credentials. In the build sections, you can add a build step. Click the Add Build Step button, select Invoke Gradle script, Tick Use Gradle Wrapper. In the Tasks field, add the commands you need to deploy the application. In our case, it will be Clean and Assemble. Click Save to finish the job definition. Click Build Now on the job page to validate the job works as expected. After a while, the job should go to green or blue, depending on your configuration, if successful. Click on the job and afterwards on console output to see the log file. Here you can analyze the build errors or you may see that the build was successful. Now we will show you how to configure Gradle and Jenkins for automated JUnit testing and reporting. Before we start looking at test running, we need to have a code sample. Unit tests can be created and run both at the middleware and the client tires. The platform test modules bring the dependencies on JUnit and JMoskit libraries out of the box, but you can use any third-party Java libraries for test automation. Let's see how it works. Go to the idea, open order edit controller screen. Here we created order helper service bin that is used to calculate the amount. Let's check the code. So it's pretty simple method which iterates through all the orders lines and sums up the multiplication of the product price by its quantity. Also we have created order service tests. It's uh, pretty simple too. Uh, we recommend using a separate test base. So let's create Gradle tasks for the test database creation 
open build gradle and within configure code module at the following tasks. Now let's go back to Jenkins. To run the test in Jenkins, go back to the project, click configure in the build section, add the following commands to the tasks field. First of all, we need to create our test base and then run the tests. Test task is a standard task of Java plugin for Gradle. Click save, then trigger a new build by clicking build now. And uh, then click on the build process and then on console output. We should wait for a while. Here you can see that our task is complete and build was successful. Now we will show how to add the JUnit test reports to the Jenkins build process. We need to install the JUnit plugin. Go to the Jenkins, Manage Jenkins, Manager plugins. After the plugin installation, let's uh, configure Jenkins so it will display the test results for individual builds as well as a trend reporting. For that, go back to the project. Click configure, add post build action, select publish JUnit test result reporting, add the following text to the test report XMLs field since this is the path where Gradle is placing its JUnit test result reports. Click save to finish the job definition. Click Build Now on the job page to validate the job works as expected. And wait for the job to be executed. On the status page you see if there were any failed tests. When you click on the test results link on the left, you will see more details. Here we can see that we have had four tests and 100% of them were successful. Code coverage is a metric that can help you understand how much of your source is tested. It's a very useful metric that can help you access the quality of your test suite and we will see here how you can get started with your project. First we need to install the Jaco Core plugin. Go to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, Available, and search for the plugin. And click Install without restart. And go back to the top page. Now let's go back to our project. Click Configure. In order to get the coverage data publisher to Jenkins, you need to add a Jacoco publisher and configure it, so it will find all the necessary information. Click Add Post Build Action and select Record Java Code Coverage Report. Use the help provided via the question mark links for more information. Basically, first you have to specify where the exact files are as following, where compiled code can be found, and where the corresponding source code is located after the build is finished to let the plugin gather all necessary pieces of information. Also, you need to exclude all tests, entities, and screen classes. Add the following to exclusion field. Click Save to finish the job definition. And Click Build Now on the job page to validate the job works as expected. If data gathering is successful, the build will include a link to coverage result similar to the HTML report of Chekako itself. The job page will be enhanced with a chart with a trend of the cut coverage of the last builds. Let's have a closer look to our service coverage. Click the coverage report. In the Coverage breakdown by package. Select the Com Company Sales Service package. Click on it. In the newly opened window, select Order Helper Service Bin in the Coverage Breakdown by Source File section. 
Our report shows 100% instruction coverage, 100% branches coverage, and so on. As you can see, all lines, branches, paths in our code are fully covered. Keep in mind though, 100% code coverage doesn't necessarily reflect effective testing. It is only reflect the amount of code exercised during tests. Let's assume that we have to prepare the application for the testing and release. For this purpose, we need to deploy an application into the production environment. Continuous deployment approach allows us to achieve these goals in Jenkins. The following steps describe how to configure the app and the job in Jenkins. First, we need to set up the application task to produce the WAR file. So let's go back to the idea. This is the tasks of the Cuba WAR building type, which builds a WAR file from the application code and its dependencies. It should be declared in the root of build cradle. The resulting WAR file is located in the build distribution project subdirectory. Pay attention to the app home parameter. Pay attention to the app home parameter. This is the path to the application home directory. In our case, it depends on the Catalina base environment variable, which defines where the running configuration of Tomcat exists. In many production environments, it is very useful to have the capability to deploy a new web application or undeploy an existing one, without having to shut down and restart the entire container. To support these capabilities, Tomcat includes a web application, installed on context path slash manager. Note that the default Tomcat installation in Ubuntu does not include the manager, so you have to install it manually. Also, in order to enable remote deployments in Tomcat, you have to add a user with the role manager script. To do so, edit the file conf slash Tomcat users XML and add the following line at the end of the file. Role with role name manager script and user with username deployer password deployer and role manager script and save the file. Also, you have to specify the maximum size in bytes of the memory allocation pool for Java Virtual Machine. You have to add the XMX parameter to Java Opts uh, environment and after that run the Tomcat server. Now let's see how to extend a Jenkins job to automatically deploy a build wire file to a Tomcat instance. Now let's see how to extend a Jenkins job to automatically deploy a build wire file to a Tomcat instance. First of all, we have to add a deploy to container plugin to the Jenkins. Then go back to our job. and click Configure. In the Build section, add the following command to the Tasks field. Next, scroll down to the bottom of the page to the Post Build Actions. Select the option Deploy WAR ear to a container. Fill in the new fields. In the WAR ear files fields, add the path to the WAR file in the project. For the Cuba application, the default way is the following. The context path is a context path part of the URL under which your application will be published in Tomcat. For the Cuba apps, this is the module prefix app by default. Select the appropriate Tomcat version from the container drop-down box. In our case, this is Tomcat 8. Now we have to add the credentials. Click Add. For the manager's username and password, just copy over what you've entered in the Tomcat user's XML file. Click Add to save the settings. From the credentials drop-down list, select the credentials. The Tomcat URL is the base URL through which your Tomcat instance can be reached. Finally, don't forget to save the configuration.
Click Build Now to run the job in Jenkins. If you check out the log file, you should see one or more lines near the end indication that the WAR file has been deployed. If you look in the log files in Tomcat, you should also see that your application has been successfully deployed. When the job is complete, you should be able to open your freshly deployed application at the URL and context path you specified in the job configuration in Jenkins. As you can see, our application is started and we can log in into it. The main goal of our webinar is reached. We have learned how to get started with Jenkins as an automation server for Cube application. We will discuss things like automated deployment, running unit and integration test, code coverage, and continuous delivery to test environments. If you have any questions, feel free to post questions on our forum page, and be sure you'll soon get an answer. Thank you for joining.